Can a person be predisposed genetically to develop diabetes, or is it all lifestyle, or is it a combination of the two? There are certain genetic factors, and you typically you would say they run, you know, run in the family. Right. And you say my dad had diabetes, and so um, exactly. I may de develop diabetes. Uh, you're not born as a diabetic. Um, that's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Again, there are contributing factors. So if you have a weakness or predisposition, it doesn't necessarily mean you will get it. If you have 50 you know, people who have a predisposition, you compare it with 50 people who don't, um, you don't have a higher number of diabetics coming from the first group than in the second group. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean if you have the gene factor for okay. diabetes, you will develop diabetes. But if you are the creating, environment is right. If you have a diet and a lifestyle that will uh, cause diabetes even in healthy people, then mm -hmm. the ones that are having predisposition to diabetes, they are the first ones to get, to develop it. Wondering the difference between type one and type two. Uh, type one seems like it would be more hereditary or genetically predisposed. You well. would uh, think so, uh, that you know, there are certain things that happen in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Again, there are indications that poor nourishment, um, development, uh, you know, poor development, mother's uh, issues with the liver or pancreas uh, mm -hmm. may then lead to uh, some problems in the, you know, the embryo okay. and then uh, develop you know, a certain you know, predispositions towards you know, developing that. But again, uh, what, what is found, there is some very good piece of research to show that if uh, children get uh, fried foods, uh, like again, a lot of trans fatty acids, their risk of developing type 1 diabetes goes up. It does. Yes, and uh, liver is always the influ influences the pancreas more than mm -hmm. any other organ. So if they eat certain kinds of food that contaminate the liver and weaken the liver and create intrahepatic gallstones, which we may be able to talk about yes. later, um, these are uh, causing problems to the pancreas and the health of the pancreas because when the, the pancreas, which is emptying its waste products via mm -hmm. the liver, there is a vein that you know, um, passes the waste products uh, directly into the liver. When the liver is you know, getting congested, then the pancreas will no longer be able wow. to function properly. And uh, if there are any stones that are released from the gallbladder or the liver and they enter the pancreas uh, you know, via the common bile duct and they start moving up into the pancreatic duct, then that can cause you know, uh, damage to the cells, mm -hmm. the insulin producing cells in the pancreas. So that is one uh, you know, cause of, of that issue. And another one is that the, the type 1 diabetes, you know, you know, again, the cells are for one reason or another not producing enough mm -hmm. insulin. Uh, again, internally, when the blood vessels are not you know, healthy, mm -hmm. if you eat too much protein, then it uh, causes the blood vessel walls or the capillary walls to become too thick and then they don't nourish the pancreatic cells properly and they might just um, die off or, or become weaker or go into a, an inactive mode, which is more likely than uh, them dying. Because if they died, you would have a dead corpse, basically, or mm -hmm. corpses of dead cells uh, you know, decomposing in the pancreas and you wouldn't survive that. So when the pancreas is becoming under functional oh, right. or dysfunctional, mm -hmm. then uh, it is more that they are inactivated. Okay. And uh, cells like that need to be stimulated and activated. Uh, again, it, a, lot of it, you know, a lot of that can be corrected by changing the diet and lifestyle and uh, cleansing the liver and to allow the pancreas to normalize. However, uh, there is usually scar tissue involved. Mm -hmm. and that uh, doesn't allow the pancreas to make uh, the, the insulin. In that case, uh, there are certain things you can do. For example, if you took a, a product called lambrokinase, uh, that is an enzyme, a systemic or metabolic enzyme mm -hmm. that is uh, probably deficient, and I'm not, you know, you know this is my opinion rather than you know, based on fact, that uh, that particular metabolic enzyme is low mm -hmm. in uh, type 1 diabetics. Okay. And uh, when you supply that, the lambrokinase 
is capable of breaking down scar tissue and oh. uh, protein fiber, fibroid type things mm -hmm. that inhibit the pancreas from uh, doing its job. And so when you allow these, these uh, ingested um, enzymes to digest mm -hmm. the fibroid tissue, the, the protein tissue, which is fibroids are made of proteins, protein fibers, um, that fiber, that is helping to activate the pancreatic enzymes and that's, uh, in, in, from my experience, helps uh, pan, you know, type 1 diabetics most okay. um, to help them get rid of these uh, excessive tissues, uh, scar tissues, and then allow the pancreas to function again. Okay, so li liver cleansing, liver taking cleansing, the enzyme? Liver cleansing, I would take that enzyme. And that's all in your book? Up. Actually, the enzyme is something that is not in the book. Oh, it's not in the book, okay. And what is it again? It's called lambrokinase, L-U-M-B. R O K I N A S E, uh, lambrokinase. There are other um, metabolic enzymes called natokinase, mm -hmm. N A T T O K I N A S E, and there's another. It's called serapeptase. Yeah, peptase. Mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, again, a you know, systemic enzyme that helps to break down excessive tissue. But lambrokinase has been uh, shown to be the most effective. Okay, and where would a person get something like that? Yeah, on the internet you can find those uh, easily. Thank you for that information.